Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Season 2, Episode 27. Hello and welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast with me, Mark Taylor. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Moss, who's from Piotta, um, and they're a company that do school apps to basically improve their communication between parents and pupils and within the school. And, and, and as a parent of three children, um, I know the information and communication that comes from the schools incredibly important for us. And um, and this new technology is just a fab way of keeping everyone in the loop in a, in a fairly straightforward way. So, hi, Chris, and welcome to the podcast. Hi, uh, thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. So, um, you're director of sales and marketing. So, can you just um, take us through a little bit of sort of the background of the company and and your role within it? Yeah, sure. So, um, Piotta's coming up to its third year now. The first year really was um, beta testing the technology. Um, and we sort of went into sales two years ago. Um, we've done exceptionally well since then. We're looking at around about 300 schools that we've got on board now, and we're in te- roughly 10 countries. Um, so we've got quite a few quite a few apps now being developed in the international school space, but mainly our business is within um, the UK, where we develop custom communication apps for schools designed to improve parental engagement. Uh, and my role within the company as a sales and marketing director is really to be the sales driving force behind the company. And um, I work very closely with a, a, an excellent marketing team called ESM that provide a really good put up partnership uh, and help us um, expand all of our marketing collateral, uh, outbound marketing, inbound marketing um, out there and getting it out there to speak to the schools. Fantastic. And is some... Um... Are you finding that sort of the schools are embracing this sort of the, the idea of technology and especially within communication as part of their sort of community with parents? Is, is it a, a big growing market or are you still finding some resistance in, um, in terms of trying to keep the, the, the paper newsletter still coming out and using that as the, the main type of information? It's a really good question. Um, UK education has it, it's quite a fractured landscape in the sense that you've got early adopters Uh, out there who are really forward thinking and want to grab the latest technology and use it to improve and consolidate wherever they can. And then you've got other schools out there that really don't have that entrepreneurial know-how and uh, and are quite insular in the way that they um, behave and procure technology. So for us, it's very, very difficult um, to sell our products conceptually because just going into a school and saying, look, we, um, we have this app where you can improve parental engagement. It, it, it's still difficult to get that concept across. But the key for us is really getting the product in their hands and trialing it. Once they trial the product, they can really see what the benefits are. And actually from the point where the schools are tr- trialing the product, our conversion rate to schools that buy it is in the high 90s. So um, as hard as it is knocking on individual school doors, uh, you know, phoning them up, asking to come and see them, um, sending them emails, that type of thing. Because the school market, education market, has been so highly oversold to, um, it's quite difficult to penetrate that way. So I think what we've tried to do is really take a bit of a leadership role within the parental engagement school app market and try and come across as an authority so rather than trying to sell the product now directly into the schools we're trying to use our knowledge and experience as an authority to give best practice best advice um, by providing blogs um, regular email campaigns with resources such as downloadable content Um, so for us as a company it's It's a case of having an engine in the background that's, you know, knocking on those individual school doors, but also trying to penetrate the market from an authority perspective. And and slowly but surely, the market is becoming more mature and warming to the idea of of apps. And that has been that's been happening, I guess, over the last couple of years, um, seeing a maturity in the market. But. Um, What I'm starting to see now is schools actually coming to us and saying, look, we realize that parental engagement makes a big difference. Um, 
we see the limitations with things like text messaging, paper letters, websites. You know, as you, as you know, Mark, uh, being in, being involved in technology, you know, such a high volume of website traffic now is actually through mobile browsers. And when we're dealing with parents from totally dem- different demographics, which we have in the UK, you know, you've got very, very affluent parents sending their children to independent schools to high deprivation areas. We need to be able to try and put all of those in We need to try and think about communicating with all of those different types of demographical parents on an even playing field. And what we feel is that our app can do that and it can challenge that environment. Um, And the idea being is that the app creates a school community, really, so that schools can communicate all of their information through a simple app, which is technology that all parents are now familiar with. But from just going back to your question, it is difficult. The landscape, as I said, is really fractured. And you've got those schools that are early adopters, really interested in grabbing new technology. They're the ones that we go after, really. And then they help spread the word of the product. But if we do get through the door of some of those late adopters, once they've got the product in their hand, they see what a benefit it is and they tend to take it on. Yeah, I can, I can see that. And and I think me personally as well, you know, my smartphone is my is my window to the world, you know, and I, and I, and I don't like browsing through uh, through my browser because it's much easier to go onto a banking app to do my banking and it's much easier to go onto the weather app to find the weather. And exactly. it's, it's much better to go onto a school app to find all the stuff with school because then you know you haven't missed anything or, you know, you haven't followed the Twitter feed all the way through or your, all the news feeds not popped up on Facebook. You know, if, if I need to know anything, that's where I need to go and that's my first point of call. I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, the thing with an app that the schools really like, and I'll come on to um, the, the I'll come on to the sort of USPs of the product in a sec. But the the things that the school really like is that the app is focused on school communication. So rather than having to follow a Twitter feed that's got you know not just the school based information but all of the other things that that parent is following on twitter and the same for facebook um and you can relate that back to email as well because it won't, when you go into your inbox of your email it's not just all focused on tesco's car insurance it's not all just focused on your work it's a whole plethora of information that's coming in through your email and you're consuming it, but you're not focusing that consumption on one specific subject. So what the app allows us to do is cut through all of that junk, all of that noise that's going on in existing communication channels and provide parents with a focused point um, where they can consume the information that they need that's also relevant to their child because using a product like an app, unlike a website where you go to the website and it's all generalized information, the app you can actually then go and choose your specific notification groups. So, for example, I'm a dad. My child's in year three. So on my son's school app, I go onto the app, I tick the urgent notifications and I tick year three notifications. And that way, whenever I get an alert, I know that it's something to do of my child rather than a text message that could be blanketed or an email that's not necessarily relevant to me i know that the information that's on my app i'm consuming is relevant to my my child's school life and i think that's how technology is moving forward that's how parents are using technology now such as social media and i think our app fits nicely as a uh, complement nicely in, in there somewhere um i was um at the bet show which is um where we we had a chat and, and and i was taken through the app and what i really liked about it is that it was incredibly clear it was very straightforward and as you said you've got the different demographics of the people of the parents but also within that you know these days you often have grandparents picking up from school and you have all sorts of different families and and um you know um childminders and that sort of thing and so it's really important isn't it that it really does go all the way across the the demographic both in terms of the individual's family as well as sort of um across the country as well that's that's really true and you know in today's fast-paced society, parents are trying to consume information as quick as they possibly can. You know, whether they're at home, they're at work, they're on the go, they're on their smartphone, they're digesting information from work, email, social media, you name it. And the app is that focus point of information. And because other people within the school community can download the app, such as grandparents, like you mentioned, and um, carers, 
um, childminders. It means that the, uh, I mean, a classic example is that a school recently sent out a school closure alert through the app and they said that they didn't have anyone turn up at the school. And in the past, when using text message, that wasn't the case because the text message only normally goes through to either mum or mum and dad if dad's registered for text messaging. Whereas what they said is that actually the message that they sent through to the app didn't just penetrate penetrate through to the parents. It actually went out to the wider school community, nans, granddads. So that that piece of important information was distributed on a much bigger scale, which is... Um, which, you know, we're really happy about. We're great to see it working like that. I was just going to say, and of course, that's just a, a, a message that's about school closure. You think that now that you can engage with that type of um, community that's surrounding your school, then you can start feeding them information that's, you know, information that could potentially improve that child's education. That's true. And, and I think also, I think the speed and the delivery of the communication is important. Um I mean, just things like I often get a message through from my daughter's school about, you know, there's been she's been awarded work of the week in the on Friday in assembly. There's going to be a presentation kind of thing. And if if that had been a letter coming home in a school bag, I may well not have got it to either much later that day or even the next morning. Um, and whereas if it had been sent first thing this morning, I would have got it always straight away, and 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 that would have affected my day and how I plan my rest of my week. So that, like you say, sort of the immediacy of it, I think, as well as the reach, is, is incredibly important. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think it's nice that we could now offer a product into. Um, a school community where it's not just mum consuming information, but dads can get involved. I had a good example of a, a dad that I was speaking to at a school and he said, look, I normally I would never have looked at um, a text message or information about what's happening at my schools at my son's school. But because it's on an app and because it's actually focused information about stuff to do with my child, you know, I'm inclined to look at it. They can go onto their phone rather than having to search for information, for example, through email, through text messaging. They can go on the app and they have instant access to that information, um, at, you know, at a click of a button. Brilliant. So can you can you take us sort of through the app sort of um, in, a, in a kind of an imaginary kind of um, flow chart, as it were, and, and, and explain some of the features and, um, and all the sort of details that you have on it, which are going to be obviously really important for the for the people listening? Yeah, sure. So each app is customized to the school. So it's a native app. So each school gets their own app in um, Google Play and the Apple iStore. Parents can download it for free. Once they download it, they have an option to then go to the settings section of the app and choose their push notification groups. And that's set up before the app goes live. Uh, and those notification groups can be completely customized by the school. So taking a primary school, for example, it could be nursery years one to six, or it could be, you know, sunshine class, tree class, red class. You can you can name it. You can personalize all of the groups based on the groups that you're working with within the school. And it doesn't just have to be class groups either. It can be after school clubs. It can be um, trip groups, you name it, year groups, house groups, whatever you want to create for your notification groups. Um, once that's once the parents done that, they then have access to the home screen. And on the home screen, they have six tiles. As a, a standard app would have six tiles, those tiles being news, events, information, contacts, alerts, uh, and then more, which takes you through to the side menu where you have things like form surveys. So just to quickly touch on um, those tiles on the front, it would be news. Um, in the news page, the school can have all of their feeds if they want. So things like social media, RSS feeds from their website, they can import all of those into the news section of the app as well as curate all of their own custom news information. So whether it's pictures of kids and what they're up to in the classroom or something more academic like, I don't know, um, what they've been learning about that particular week at school. Um, that normally goes into the news section. The nice thing about having the social media feeds, if the school's using social media, come through into news, it means that all of the, none of the social media is missed by the parents. So rather than going on Twitter and having to search for all the latest tweets, and as you know, if you're following, you know, more than a couple of hundred people, after a few hours, you've really got to scroll through quite a lot of information. So what's nice about having their school's Twitter or social network feeds come through the news section is it's all there and it still keeps them in the app. 
rather than distracting them with all the other sort of junk and information that's going on, on social media. Um, the next section on the app is of events where the school can host either an ICS calendar files so they can have multiple calendars in there that can be coming through as a feed from their website or they can curate their own calendar events. They can color code their calendar events um, and parents can scroll through monthly, daily to see all the events that's happening in the school and then they can actually add those events to their home calendar on their phone. So as a parent, if you're scrolling through the calendar and you see something that you like, you can click it and you can add it to the calendar that you keep on your phone, which also sets an alert and reminder for you if you've got that set up. You've got an information page, information tile, sorry, and that's more like the, it's a combination of sort of static stuff that you might find on the website. So things like head teachers blog or school uniform policy documents, lunch, dinner menus, that sort of thing. Um, as well as a place where you, you can use it as a notice board. So for putting things up like useful links to resources. So something nice that I like to see on a lot of school apps is providing parents with links to external resources for um, autism or children with disabilities or the local offer, which is, you know, stuff to do with the local authority. Um, so that's, you know, that's things that you can do with that page. Um, you've got a contacts page, which allows the parents to either ring or email the school directly from there. Um, and then you've got messages and alerts. So the alerts section means that the school can send anything to the app, whether it's news events, information, forms or surveys or messages. They can send all of that to the app and they can choose to either tag it with a notification or not. If they choose to tag it with a notification, they can tag it to a notification group and all of those notifications will come through the alerts section as well as the school messages. So that area almost becomes completely personal to each user. So if I go to the news section of the app, what I'll find is that it's a generic information about the whole school, but the alert section may have a combination of news, events, messages, everything in there, but stuff that's just relevant to my child. So dad's new dad's alert section might be different to mum's alert section because dad might be following the sports stuff that's happening at the school, whereas mum might not be. Um, and then in the side menu, you've got forms and surveys. Surveys is a fantastic function because it really allows... Um, the parents to quickly respond to quick snapshot surveys rather than having that full paper trail that schools sort of um, struggle with. So they can post a quick survey, parents can fill it out on the phone and send it back to the school. And then in the forms section, you can do anything from permission slips to booking parents evening. So it's, you know, it really is a one stop shop for all of that school home communication. And it's amazingly, I mean, that's incredibly comprehensive. And, and, and I think almost everything that you said there, they're all the key elements that, that as parents we struggle with, aren't they? You know, it's making sure we know what's going on in trips, filling in forms, booking things, um, wanting to know, like, say, about school closures or whatever the alerts have to be. And so just knowing that you've got it on your smartphone and it's it's there and you're not going to miss anything. Um, I just think it's yeah. fantastic and um, and, and su such a useful tool that... Um, I mean, it's it, like I say, it should be should be used everywhere. <laughs> the, the thing that we find really gets the, the the thing that we find secures the uptake from the parents is the fact that the app is customised completely to the school. So rather than the parents going to the app store and having to download some sort of esoteric or distant brand that's got nothing to do with the school. That requires a bit of a thought process. But if the school just go out to the parents and say, look, download our app from Google or the App Store, they don't even have to say the name of the app because the parents just go into the App Store, search the name of the school and download that school's app. So whether it's a St. Mary's or a Eastwood or a primary school, secondary school, whatever it is, that app is customised to that school under their name and branding. So the parents are walking around with a piece of technology in their pockets that's that offers a bit of patronism actually we sometimes we sometimes hear back from parents that they like to tell the other all oh, of you downloaded the school app you know it's all, have you seen your child on the school app that sort of thing it offers that sort of level of patronism which is really nice and from the school's point of view i think they're proud to the fact that they've got that strong piece of technology out in the marketplace that that's their own and 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 from the school's point of view um 
once you've built the app and, and it's there to be downloaded, do you then support it from there on in? You know, because as, as I know, having developed some apps, that um, the continual updates um, from Apple and, and Google and that um, and need to keep on top of all the time. So, so do you sort of look after the whole thing from there on in or is it sort of a one-stop um, point of no, contact? No. no, we totally look after it. I mean, we we... we we're trying to future i mean we're very passionate about edu- education as, as an organization you know the whole reason that we got into this business is because we realized that communication between the school and parents was very limited and we we knew that there was a way to improve that through technology what we try and do is future proof the technology by making sure that all of the releases that we're doing with the app they're fully um fully up to date with all of the apple and google um, processes that's going on in the background with them but also we work in a constant state of evolution so every day we're doing a new iteration of the app so we're constantly changing it we're tr- constantly trying to make it better improve it whether to optimize it with speed or functionality or add new functions to the app itself we're doing that on a daily basis and what the school get is every three to six months is a new release of the product that's better than the one before uh, and that's something that we um you know that, that goes a long way with the schools knowing that we're there supporting the technology providing them with an ever ever evolving product um, and future proofing their communications yeah and that's really important isn't it for schools because they they over the over an, an entire school sort of ecosystem they spend a lot of money on technology and you know they go out and they buy a set of ipads or they buy a set of laptops and then they're often just left with them um sure. and, and then within a few years they're having they're in the same position of having to do the same again and it might be that the ict leads um isn't is is necessarily au fait with it as they would like to be so therefore they're having to think well where do we go to get the support how do i you know where do i find the next group of things that i need to buy and all that so so having that continual relationship i think is a really important factor for for schools and also for you as well in terms of being able to improve what you're doing all the time yeah yeah definitely i mean it's not it's also the handsets that are coming out as well i mean you've got new new handsets that are constantly being released so we need to make sure that our screens are optimized to suit those handsets and the technology is optimized to suit those handsets um you know you've got the ipad pro for example when that come out we thought wow you know this huge ipad we want to make sure that our app looks really good on it because there's a certain there's a certain um amount of energy coming from our company thinking that well if there's this new technology being developed we want to make sure that our product looks really good on it not just works well on it but looks good on it but the other the other thing is is that we also offer a real sort of hand holding process with the schools because we realize that okay apps technology has been around for a while now but it's fairly new for schools with regards to engagement and um so we offer quite a good hand-holding process. So the school get a free trial, for example, of the app for the first month. So it gets, they again then get to suss it out. They get loads of training. We provide unlimited support. Uh, and then once they decide that they want to go ahead after that first month, we, you know, we're there. We're there on the telephone. We want to answer questions. You know, we want them to provide feedback for us and we want them to have a strong relationship with us because that's going to help us evolve the product and learn about what needs to be done to change the app and make it more and more suitable for the demands of the parents and the school. That sounds fantastic. And and so what what is what is the cost of the school or the parents? I mean, how how, how does the, the, the funding side of it and the cost side work for you? The school own the app and they, they purchase a license from us. So it's an app that's made by Piotta, but it's their own school app in their branding. Um, and the way that it works is normally there's a setup fee. So it's a £200 setup fee for primary schools and SEND schools and a £400 setup fee for secondary schools. Um, and that's only payable if they decide to go ahead after the trial. And then on top of that, there's an annual cost of a minimum of £500 for primary schools and SEND schools and a minimum of £1,000 for secondary schools, and that's per annum. And I think that's um, it's incredibly good value because... Um, f- um, even if you're just thinking of it purely on a cost sense, you know the, the amount of paperwork that you that you save on, and and the the amount of time and effort and all that sort of stuff can easily be found um, within within that cost. Um, and and also, 
um, as I'm finding with lots of the things that I'm chatting about on this season, um, parents are often really keen, you know, we spend quite a lot of money on our school um, in terms of supporting various trips and all this sort of thing. And I think actually technology is one of the things that parents are also quite um, good at, at providing as well. You know, they just think, oh, it's actually that might only be a pound a year for um, to have something which is so valuable that will support my child in the school or a couple of pounds here or a couple of pounds there. And when you can really see it making a difference both from your parental point of view as well as the school's point of view, I think um, the, the, these sort of figures um, are just so easily um, so so easily doable, aren't they? So, I mean, from a from a from a cost and time saving point of view, um, initially, I don't think there's a huge cost saving because you know they're paying out for a new product. But over time, there's a huge cost saving because the amount of paper that they save is incredible. The amount of time that they save as resource is incredible. You know, I was speaking to schools recently, and I'm just I'm just currently putting together a blog and uh, a campaign that's going to go out which has got a survey from all of our existing customers and we asked them a few specific questions about cost and and time and all of them come back every every single one of them come back saying from a time perspective it's just saving us so much money because we're not having to photocopy copy bits of paper we're not having to um you know clamber around for the newsletter and pull resources together to put the newsletter together teachers can be responsible for putting out their own information on the app if they want to as well or you can have it through a central admin team it's up to the school and their policy um but from the from a sort of a hard cost point of view putting it against other communication resources yeah they're going to you know they're going to send less text messages because they're now using a communication app we've got a new piece of technology that's being developed that means that um later on in the year you'll be able to use our app for um, sending one-to-one -one communication, so sending individual messages to individual parents and users, and that will completely take over what you know text for, uh, take over from text. So no more having to spend out you know four p per text message. After that, you'll be able to literally use the app and use push notification unlimited um, for as long as you want, which is which I think would be fantastic. But just really quickly to touch on um, the the cost point of view from now. Yes, we can reduce saving money on text messages. Yes, we reduce the amount of money that they spend on paper um, but one of the things that's really important is understanding the school's objective a lot of the time I will go into a meeting with the school and they will say to me look we really like your product the problem is we haven't got the time to put all of the information on the website and all of the information on the app as well. So in a lot of the cases, we can get the website to talk to the app and pull that information. But then I'll sit in there and I'll say to them, look, what is your objective? How many people are visiting your website to look at the news and events calendar? And, you know, nine times out of 10, the answer is I don't know. And if they go and look at the statistics, it's very low figures. I was speaking to a school yesterday and they were talking about the amount of parents that go on the website was very low. And then for the amount of parents that log into a VLE was in single figures. And that's a senior school with um, something like 600 pupils in it for, for single figure parents to be logging into the VLE. That's that's pretty bad. That's because they're not interested in going through a browser um, to get information about their child. They'd much rather use an app. So I always say to the school, Look, what's your objective? Make sure that your website is Ofsted compliant. You need to do that. Make sure that you're providing a good, strong website to represent your ban, brand Sorry, for prospective teachers and prospective parents. But do you really need a website to engage your current parents? Why are you spending so much time and energy trying to put information on the website to engage them when you know they won't go there? Let's take that energy and resources and let's put a little bit of it into communicating through the app where you will engage your existing parents once they get their head around that concept the app absolutely flies and they make such a good job of it i think that that's that's really has sort of hit the nail on the head hasn't it and it's just that kind of you know that these the technology is the tool and but it's the engagement and the and the community um, the community which is the important bit and and this is a tool which just enables all of that to happen in one fell swoop and that's that really is the key um, I, I think I saw on your website as well, you're also in, in partnership with some organisations as well, just to sort of give some of the teachers a bit of a chance to uh, to understand um, who you've been working with as well. Is, is that, is, am I right in thinking that? Yes. I mean, there's, there's various organisations out there that are involved in school technology and um, bringing together, you know, specific school communities. As I mentioned um, 
I'm not sure if I mentioned it to you earlier, but we've just recently brought on a guy called Matt Jackson, who's now looking after all of our independent school business and insta, um, international school business. And we're part of a group called COBIS, um, which basically is the Council of British International Schools, which is a fantastic partnership that allows us to really engage with international schools where, you know, in any other circumstance, it's really quite difficult. I mean, speaking to UK schools alone, it's very difficult to phone up and get a business manager or a head teacher on the phone. But having a having partnership with someone like Hobis is, is really good because it allows us to get access uh, to otherwise, you know, head teachers and SL, SLT members of international schools. For those people listening who who really sort of latched onto this and really think it's a great idea and, and they haven't got anything like this at the moment, what's the what's the best place for them to go in and, and look at your website and, and get in contact and, and get their ball rolling to see about getting their free trial? Yep, just come to our website. You can email us at hello at piotta.co.uk. Just drop us a quick email to say that you're interested and set up a call. Um, but the, the best thing I can advise is two things. Either go to the App Store and download one of our school apps. Just type in Piotta into the App Store and have a look at have a look at the apps and check out a school's app and see how the functionality works. Or come through to our website, fill in a form, um, and we can do an online demonstration with you to show you exactly how it works, the ins and outs of it. And then at that stage, if you're interested in going for a free trial, then we can get that set up. And we can, as long as you provide us with your logo and all the relevant um, pictures and everything that we need for your app, we can have the app to you in two weeks. Oh, wow. That's that's really quick. So so people who've really got the bit between their teeth to, to try and get this going or or even be able to do it and sort of then take it back to the senior management and say, look, I've come across this and, you know, I've, I, I can actually show you a different school's version of this. Look how it works. Then they, they, they've they've already got the answers in their hand, really, which is which well, like I, a really good I would thing. go I would go one better. What I tend to say to schools in that situation, you know, where they've got a governing body that they need to refer to or, or a senior leadership team that they want to talk to about it is I tell them them come through to us we'll we'll build your app for you why don't you have your app for free for for a month and then you can present your own product to your own set of governors or your own slt team and once they see their own product you know with their own school badge and everything on it it's, it's kind of a no-brainer from there yeah, that sounds fantastic. And and just in case you you didn't get some of the website addresses or anything, if you go to educationonfire dot com um, and go on to the podcast episodes, I'll make sure that on the show notes we've got all these things linked up as well. So so either way, you can make sure you can find all the details that all the details that you need. So. Um, Chris, thanks so much for for chatting to me. It's been um, really, really interesting, and it's such a it's such a great thing. And um, and as I say, from a parent's point of view, I, I know how great it's, it works. And um, and also having witnessed it myself, you know, the quality is very good, and and that's a really important thing. So that the schools have peace of mind, both in terms of of the 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 communication and the working with you directly, and also just knowing that the app's going to work all the time and uh, constantly updated. I think that's a real peace of mind. So uh, thanks very much for chatting and. And, um, and I wish you the very best with it. That's really kind of you to say so, Mark. Yeah, it's been lovely talking. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information, please go to educationonfire.com.